Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Moms in Prayer podcast, a place where we are encouraged and equipped as moms so we can better pray for and impact the next generation. Our heart's desire is for every school in every nation all around the world to be covered in prayer. We're so thankful you joined us today. Let's get started. Welcome to the Moms in Prayer podcast powered by Christian Parenting. I'm your host, Stacy Callender, and this is episode 149. Have you found yourself in tears, deeply discouraged on this journey of motherhood? You are not alone. This is exactly where we find Hannah, whose story we are going to look at today as we continue our series, Moms in the Bible. We have been seeing how faithfully the Lord provided for each one of these moms as they faced impossibilities, discouragement, and heartbreak. His gracious hand was able to work even through their weaknesses and mistakes. And the same God who helped each one of these moms will also help you. Our guest today is our very own Barb Cole, the Mid-Atlantic Division Coordinator. And I'm telling you, this episode is chock full of encouragement. Listen in as Barb inspires us through looking at the example of Hannah that entrusting our children to the Lord is the best possible decision we can make in motherhood. Before we begin, we have a couple of announcements. Do you receive our monthly newsletter? It's that dose of encouragement you need to start the month outright. Get a front row seat to hope through prayer that's impacting countries and moms throughout the world. You can subscribe on our homepage at momsinprayer.org or click on the resources tab and you'll see the newsletter drop down. Be sure to download your beautiful free printable of Psalm 1017 and be reminded that God, the one who bends down to listen when we cry out to him, is our encourager. You will find the printable on the blog on the Moms and Prayer website right where you find the show notes. Now let's get started. Well, Barb Cole, welcome to the Moms and Prayer podcast. Well, Stacy, thanks for having me. Oh, it's such a joy. Barb, will you share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, um, I'm Barb Cole, and I am the division coordinator for the Mid-Atlantic States. That's New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. I live in Pennsylvania, but I cover those states. And I've been in Moms in Prayer for 20, well, man, I have to do the math, 24 <laughs> years this past year. Wow. February. That's awesome. What about your family? Well, I've been married to my wonderful husband, Ken, for going on 46 years. We have two grown sons who are married. And so we have four grandchildren, which are the joy of our lives. That's what I hear they are. I can't oh. wait. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard that classic joke. If I'd have known they were so great, I would have had them first. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, today is so special because we get to give hope for the mom who is discouraged. What a gift that is. And I am so excited because we are going to get to talk about Hannah today. So Barb, will you lead us out and just tell us who is Hannah? Well, um, she's one of my favorite Old Testament women, I think. She is a housewife. Hannah, the very name means woman of grace. I just love her story. That's so good. What a what a name, Woman of Grace. So we find Hannah and she is discouraged. Why was she so discouraged? Well, first of all, Hannah was one of two wives to Elkanah. That just um whenever I read that, that just amazes me. Two wives to one yeah, husband. That can never good... go well. <laughs> no. And it didn't in this case either. <laughs> no, it did not. And to top it off, Hannah was barren. She had no children. And to compare her with the other wife, Penina, Penina had children. And so not only did she have children, but she taunted Hannah for not having any. And so just years of that kind of provoking caused a great deal of discouragement in Hannah's story. Mm -hmm. And we could see why, though her name might be fun to say, Penina, mm -hmm. she was not <laughs> fun to be around. Not at all. Not at all. 
So she was tormented unmercifully by this other wife. But what makes Hannah's story so endearing is that she had a great relationship with the Lord. What I love about her is that she went to the Lord with her discouragement. And what it, this shows us about God is that he does not show partiality to people that are in positions of so-called importance or prominence. He bends his ear to those who are afflicted. And if, if there ever was an afflicted woman, it was Hannah. And so she went to him with her discouragement because she knew he would hear her. Oh, that's so good, Barb. And it's such an important thing that you just pointed out that God is so gracious and so kind and that he bends his ear down to this ordinary housewife. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, what else amazes me about Hannah is that she not only took her discouragement to the Lord, but she didn't lash back at the other wife, Penina. I mean, she, I think I would have been provoked to lash back, but she did not do that. Instead, she took the bitterness of her soul and the anguish of her heart, and she poured it out before the Lord. Oh, what an example. I can see why she's your favorite already. <laughs> well, I have lots to learn from her, and I would, I would like to be like Hannah when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. This is so good. So here she is discouraged and she's bringing her discouragement to the Lord of Heaven's armies. Absolutely. I mean, we'll see that later in her song. She knows this God of hers and she knows that he can be her protector, that he is stronger than any of her enemies. He's the one that's going to save her. And so that's who she goes to. Mm, excellent. And here she is praying, pouring out her heart to the Lord, her broken heart to the Lord. And Eli sees her. He's the priest. Now, what does Eli think of Hannah? Oh, my goodness. Hannah is such the subject of being misunderstood. I mean, not only by Eli, we'll get into him, but I mean, to even begin with her husband, Elkanah, God bless him. <laughs> He comes to Hannah and he says, well, aren't I better than 10 sons? I mean, oh my goodness. He did not understand her heart, her desire to be a mother, her need to have children. Well, yes, she had a husband, but you know, she had to share him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then he comes to her and says, aren't I where, oh, well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> now, that was being misunderstood by her husband. Then she gets to the temple and she's pouring out her heart before the Lord. And Eli thinks she's drunk. Oh, yeah. For him to think that, I just think that that's a sad commentary on the state of Israel's devotion to God. Apparently, others had come into the temple in that kind of state, being drunken. So here he's mistaking Hannah for that. But she seems to very calmly correct him that, no, she is not drunk. She is really pouring out her anguish before the Lord. And so then... Eli steps back and listens to her. Excellent. And I love that though she was misunderstood by her husband, though she was misunderstood by Eli, she was not misunderstood by the Lord. Absolutely not. God knew her heart and he understood her completely. So when she explained to Eli that she was asking the Lord for a son, Eli gives her a word from the Lord. He says, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant your petition. What I love about Hannah is that she believed that word by faith. How do we know that? She left there and she immediately started eating again and her face was no longer downcast. That tells us that when she heard this word from the Lord through Eli, she believed it. That's excellent. So true. And what an example, again, Hannah is. When we hear from the Lord, when we're holding on to his word, we're holding on to his promises, we can trust him to fulfill those. I know. I know. And you know what? Hannah surprises us again because she makes this promise to the Lord, you know, and when she starts out, I almost think, oh, don't put conditions on the Lord. Like She starts out, if you will give me a son. But you know what her promise was? I'm going to give him back to you for all the days of his life. Now, that's 
that's a lot more noble than I think I could ever be. But here she is, such an unselfish vow she's making to the Lord. Yes, and it's part of her relationship with the Lord. This is another insight into how well she knew her God. And her request wasn't just for her to have a son. God was preparing her heart and using the season of barrenness to do something amazing for the entire nation of Israel. Absolutely. This was not just a promise that God was going to fulfill for Hannah. He had plans for the entire nation of Israel. So good. The future of the nation of Israel rested on this mom's prayers. What a radical thought. I know. I know. She has granted this son and she names him Samuel, which means ask of God. So this child was prayed for, he was petitioned for, he was asked for long before he was conceived. Yes, and in God's perfect timing, he answered this request. He remembered her plea. She, he gave her a son, and I love that, that his name means asked of God. That's so good. And Hannah kept her promise to the Lord. Now, I was just reading a few weeks ago in one of the the books of the Old Testament, one of those first couple that had all the list of all the laws. I think it was numbers and I was plowing through it. But it said in there that if a married woman makes a vow and her husband becomes aware of it, he has the option to make that vow void. But if he doesn't say anything, then that vow stands. And what impresses me is that not only did Hannah keep her promise to the Lord, but her husband, Elkanah, went along with her. So I have to give him credit now. We kind of were, were <laughs> yes. uh, bagging on a him a little hard bit. on him. <laughs> yeah, about not being understanding. But for not being understanding at the beginning, now he's saying, you know what, Hannah? And he knows how, she, how much she wants this child. He's saying, what seems good to you, we're going to abide by. So he, he kept that vow for her as well. Not being fully aware of what God's plans were. But I'm, so I'm, I'm giving him some credit here for coming back and, and standing with Hannah. Excellent. And that's, that is good to do. We'll be gracious to Elkanah right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that. He says, may the Lord help you keep your promise. Mm -hmm. You know, he came alongside her and he prayed for her. That's a prayer. May the Lord help you. He knew this was going to be difficult for Hannah. He knew she had wanted a child. He saw that. He did mm -hmm. hear that. He was trying to tell her he was better than 10 cents, but <laughs> Hannah still, <laughs> he tried, um, but Hannah still wanted that child. And mm -hmm. here's Elkanah coming alongside his wife and praying for her, say, may the Lord help mm. you keep your promise. That's such a good point, Barb. Mm, yes. And I love when we get into chapter two of First Samuel. I guess we didn't even mention that this, this is all found in First Samuel chapter one. And now we're into chapter two. And Hannah has such a heart of thanksgiving and rejoicing before the Lord. Having, I mean, she's giving up this son that she asked for. She's she's taking him back to Eli to be raised there. And she comes up with this beautiful song of praise to her Lord. Oh, just incredible. Wow. That is. So the very moment where Hannah is bringing her son to Eli at the tabernacle saying, do you remember me? I'm the woman that was praying for a son. And here he is. The Lord has given me this boy. And now I am giving him back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wow. I know. So when I take a look at that song, I mean, because I'm thinking, uh, you know, at the times when I was discouraged and maybe then, you know, the Lord gave me something and encouraged me and I was able to get through it. Did I stop to sing his praises like Hannah did? I mean, this is remarkable. And this is what makes me want to be like Hannah. She says, my heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for my enemies. Now she has an answer for her rival, Penina. You know, so about, good. Yeah, I, I have a, I have had a son now. So you can't taunt me anymore. I am no longer barren. I rejoice because God rescued me. No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Boy, did she know her God. And she was very quick to give him thanks and praise for honoring her and, and lifting her, her spirits and giving her encouragement. 
That's so good. And here, her time with Samuel as she's pouring into him and loving on him. I, we know as moms, your hearts get very attached to your children. So we know this is a huge act of sacrifice and love for her Lord to honor the vow and bring her son and let him be raised by someone else. I mean, it's just incredible. It is. It really is. Now, she and her husband visited Samuel every year and she would take him gifts, but she didn't ever want to take back that gift that she had given to the Lord. She honored that. I mean, can you imagine having to leave him there every year after visiting? I couldn't. And oh. Eli's sons weren't the greatest people at all. <laughs> so the environment <laughs> uh -uh, that she is leaving Samuel in, she is truly entrusting him to the Lord. And what Samuel became is worthy to celebrate and to see the Lord's hand on him. What kind of man did Samuel mm -hmm. become? Oh, my goodness. He became what what is known as a great prophet, a great judge. He had the honor to choose the first king of Israel. And then when Saul kind of uh, didn't obey God fully, he had the honor of finding King David when he was still a young boy out there tending the sheep. You know, I mean, yes. He, oh, an incredible man of God. Even I love the story of when God first spoke to him and it's at night and he hears his name being called and he gets up and goes to Eli the priest and says, yes, you called me. And Eli says, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed, you know, and it takes Eli three times to realize that it's God calling him. But, you know, anyway, he says, well, this is what you do. You go back to bed and you say, if you hear this again, you just say, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. And that's exactly how Samuel responded. And throughout his life, pretty much he was listening to God. Oh, that's so good. Yes, the word tells us that he grew in favor with the Lord and with people and that the Lord was with him and that everything Samuel said proved reliable. This is a godly leader. Absolutely. Who was prayed for by a mom before he was ever conceived? Awesome. So good. The power. This is an account that points to the power of prayer, Barb. Absolutely. The, especially the power of a praying mom. This account highlights what the prayers of a mother can do. Ah, so good. Okay. So I also want to talk about that we can't outgive God. So he, oh, yes. right? <laughs> so I what know, does God Hannah's, do? Hannah's story just is, is a great demonstration of that because after she gives up Samuel, gives him back to the Lord, what happens? God gives her and Elkanah five other children. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, here she was barren all those years, didn't have any. She had finally prays for this one and she is willing to give him back to the Lord. And because she did that, God honored her and gave them five more children. Like you say, you cannot outgive God. So good. So, so good. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, Barb, do you have any hope to share for discouraged moms? Absolutely. And I want you to understand that God is our encourager. I mean, just think about the meaning of that word encouragement. I mean, you can just break it down. It's the act of giving courage to someone who has become downcast. And when you're downcast and you are depressed, you just don't have energy. You don't have courage to move. And it's just devastating. But God is such an encourager. He lifts us up. He supports us. He gives strength and hope to us when we are discouraged. And when he lifts us up, he makes us more determined more confident, and he fills us with hope. And it's not a hope like the world goes and says, oh, I hope this is going to happen. No, the hope that God gives us is an expectancy. When God promises, he does. And when God fills you with hope, it's not wishful thinking. It is an expectancy. Oh, that's so good. An absolute certainty because God is faithful to fulfill every promise he has ever made. Not one word has ever failed in the history of mankind and in all of eternity that he said. He's never failed. Not once. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So good. I love that God is our encourager and how we need to hold on and remember that. And as Hannah was so discouraged, so distraught, and like you said, without strength, without, she wasn't able to eat. She was upset. She couldn't celebrate. She, she went aside and went to pray. What a beautiful picture to see that Hannah in her discouraged state got on her knees and cried out to God, her encourager. And that's exactly what he did, didn't he? Absolutely. That's exactly what he did. And that's exactly what we need to do when we are downcast and discouraged. We need to not rail against the situation. We need to take our anguish to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And again, what you said before with Penina, we don't see Hannah lashing out at Penina. She just took it and then took her anguish and her disappointment and her discouragement and her hurt to the Lord. Man, such an example. He's the one that can handle it and take care of it and help us. So true. And even remove it remove our memory of it. Yes. He can do that. Any scriptures you want to share with us? Oh, yeah. I, ha I have a couple. One I especially like is Psalm 10, verse 17. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. Oh, he listens. He understands. Isn't that what we all desire, to have somebody really listen to us and understand our pain? Well, it's true. His word tells us that's exactly who he is and what he does. So, so good. I love that. Anything else you want to share? Well, yeah. You know, Psalms are filled with with these kinds of encouraging things because, well, a lot of them were written by David and, and you know, yeah, we know of him being a, the great king of Israel, but he had a lot of down times. He was depressed. He was afflicted. He was chased down. He had a lot of enemies. And so he wrote a, quite a few of them that will help us. So there's another one in Psalm 18 verses 16 to 19. And David says, God reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. This is like Hannah's song. He's proclaiming the praises of God afterwards. You know, we knew he was down there in that pit. He was being downtrodden by his enemies. But this is after the fact he's able to praise God for reaching down and lifting him out. That's the kind of God we have. Yes, he's, he's high and mighty, but he humbles himself and reaches down to us at our level to draw us out of whatever is dragging us downward. Hallelujah. Because he delights in us. I don't know why he does. There's nothing in me that, that he ought to delight in me, but he delights in me. And that's why he does it. And he delights in us all. I love that. That's so good. So how has the Lord encouraged you, Barb? Well, I have to say there was a period of time in my life when I was uh, disappointed and I was distressed because things were not going according to my plan. You know how we like to make our plans. And I think that's a lot of times what can lead us to being discouraged because things aren't going our way and we, we want things to happen our way. Well, this particular period of time, our oldest son, David, was a senior in high school and he had been accepted at a university at Auburn, Alabama. And we were, we were living in Pennsylvania at the time. So that's 850 miles distance. And that's pretty far. Yeah, it is. It's, it's way too far for this mama. My, my son <laughs> should have stayed close to home. You know, I wanted to keep him close to home. I was not nearly as noble as Hannah, willing to, yes, I gave lip service to giving them back to the Lord because I know he only entrusted us with them to raise them to know him but I only gave it lip service. And so when he determined that he's going that far away to college next year, I was, I was really distressed, not, not a happy mama. And I, I didn't rail against it to anybody, I, particularly my son. He never knew that I, I felt this way because I didn't want to hold him back, but I was disturbed because this was not my plan. However, at that time, the Lord knew exactly 
how he was going to encourage me and lift me out of this. Because I had a friend who came to me and asked me if I had ever heard of the ministry Moms in Prayer. And it was Moms in Touch at the time, but I'm, I'm going to say Moms in Prayer from here on. And I said, no, I don't know why I hadn't heard of it. What is it? And she said, well, it's moms who gather together locally to pray for one hour every week for their children in schools. I said, well, you don't have to tell me any more except how do we do this? Are you doing this? Let me do this. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah. So she invited me to start a group with her, which we did. And we invited other moms to join us. And I would take every week to the Lord my distress over my son going so far away. The, the whole point was that I would lose control over what he was doing or knowing what he was doing. And so I began to ask God to give him a really good roommate a Christian, because this was not necessarily Christian college, it's land grant university, give him a Christian roommate with whom they can work together in ministry, or they can hold each other accountable and stay strong in their faith. Because I was so afraid the distance that, you know, is his faith his own? Is he going to stand strong? And so I asked him for that. And these moms would rally around me and they asked for the same thing. And they gave me such encouragement. And because we were praying through the four steps and giving uh, praise to the attributes of God, they taught me how to take my eyes off the situation and give it to God. And that's what I learned through that experience. And so by the time that fall arrived and we were taking him to Auburn, I felt I, I was ready to release him, you know, and I could trust him to the Lord. And so that's what I did. But God, who is full of surprises and likes to give affirmation when we are being obedient, had a surprise for us. So when we arrived at Auburn and helped our son, David, get settled into his room that day, we met his roommate and we met his parents. And I'm thinking, boy, they sure seem like Christians. They, <laughs> there's something about them. And so when we had lunch, that was confirmed. And Aww. I said to his roommate's mother, his roommate was John, our son's David. <laughs> that's kind of cool yeah, it is. and I said to his John's mother I have to say that your family and John are an answer to my prayers because I started praying in a moms and prayer group asking for God to give David a Christian roommate and she looked at me and said no I think you have that wrong your family and David are answers to our prayers because we've been praying for John to have a Christian roommate as she said, and I've been praying in a moms and prayer group, just that very thing. So to talk about how God just knit this whole thing together, not only did he knit David and John's hearts together <laughs> as, as roommates and through college, they remained friends. Now, John is a church planter and, and a pastor in South Florida, which is where he was from. And David is a missionary. So, you know, they're still serving the Lord, loving the Lord, and still in touch with each other. But John's mother and I have opportunity to be knit together as moms and prayer moms who prayed for the same thing. And we met up, they from Florida, us from Pennsylvania, met up in Alabama on, on a college campus, and God confirmed that we could trust our sons to him. Only God. That is an awesome testimony. I'm so encouraged just <laughs> listening to it. <laughs> and every time I share that testimony, I mean, I, I am just amazed all over again at, at that. I mean, at what God did and how he relieved my mama's heart that, you know, my prayers were the best thing I could do for him, that his plans were better than mine for my son. And John's mother and I actually had an opportunity many years ago. I don't know how exactly how know how many, but we went to uh, Venezuela on a mission trip and shared moms in prayer and were able to share that testimony. So, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing <laughs> when you think what God can do. <laughs> what God can do in surrendering our children to him. We don't ever need to be afraid to do that. What a gift. Absolutely. It was a gift for me. It grew my faith and it taught me a lot, as has continued years in Moms in Prayer, about the power of praying and praying through the four steps. I mean, praising God and taking time to confess and thanking him, you know, like being more like Hannah, thank him for what he's done. And then interceding with other moms for our children in schools. I'm in this until Jesus comes back or he takes me home, whichever <laughs> is first. So. <laughs> me too. That's so good. God is our encourager and you know that. And I love that, Barb. Will you pray for us? 
Oh, absolutely. Heavenly Father, you listen to every cry of our hearts. You are our help. Oh, how we praise you for being tender and listening toward those who are downcast. Your loving kindness reaches those who are feeling depressed, who are feeling forgotten, and those that are on the verge of losing hope. Out of your great compassion, Father, would you reach down and lift up that mom who is right now feeling discouraged? Hear her cry and come to her rescue. Make her bold with strength in her soul and cause her to remember that you are a good God who loves her. Demonstrate to each mom that you are the God of heaven's armies, the one that Hannah prayed to, and that you are more powerful than all of our enemies. Oh, Lord, would you fill each mom with joy and peace as she trusts in you? Lift her head to see you at work in whatever her circumstance is and answer her prayers. Would you make us all like Hannah, women who take our discouragement to you because you will bring about our good and your glory? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. What joy we have in knowing that God himself is our encourager. I can think of a lot of people I want to share this message of hope with. Can't you? Did you know that when you share these podcasts, you are sharing Moms in Prayer and helping us get closer to the vision of every school in the world covered in prayer. We'd love to have you join us in your prayers, in a group, and even with your financial support. You can get our show notes, links to the things we talked about, and ways to give on our website at momsinprayer.org. Moms make the difference. Moms that entrust their children to the Lord. Moms just like you. See you next week.